working with Postgres from the command line. Let's do a quick crash course on that. Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where usually we learn Elixir, but we also cover pretty much anything a backend dev needs, and Postgres is definitely one of those. I'm going to assume you already have PSQL installed on your computer and that you have a default user called Postgres. Now, say we've also got a database called Linkly Dev, which we do because one of the projects I've done on this channel created it. And we can connect to it with PSQL-D, name of the database, U, name of the user, except since our user is Postgres, that is assumed as default. We can just do this, uh, or even without the dash D, since there's only one argument. Now, once you're in the shell, there are two things, uh, there are two modes you can work with. One is you can just issue normal commands. This will just be SQL, so maybe select star from tags and there you see or you can do something that begins with a backslash and this is called a meta command now backslash a, a question mark will give you information about how the meta commands work backslash h gives you help on sql itself uh, the other really useful ones are backslash l will show you all the databases you have now with any of these commands or with many of them, you can add a plus, which I think of as additional, additional information. So now we're listing the databases, but we're getting more info on them. Backslash D will show you what's in your current database. You can see the types here. We have tables, we have sequences. I guess that's all we see on this one. Backslash DT will filter that down to just the tables or DS, just the sequences. If we had views, DV would do it but we don't have any views here. Uh, backslash DU will give us the users. Once again, we can get additional information on that um, for any of these pretty much. And then let's have a look at how to change databases. So I said there are no views here. Let's change to one that does have views. That's backslash C. And this one's called unbreakable dev and now we're connected to that. Let's have a look at it. Let's get more information about one of these tables. Now I said you can do DT to filter down to the tables and you can actually filter down to just one table, but that's not the information we want. If we want to dig in and get details on it. We we'll just do a backslash D and then the name of the table. So goals. And now we can see uh, all of the columns, all of the indexes and uh, just the general info we want to get on that and we can do the same thing with a view as you see here We just have one view. Let's get the information on that So let's see this just has a start an end a length and then the ID So let's say we want to select everything from this we can do select star from streaks and there's a mistake here we can fix that either by going up and just deleting it or the other thing you can do is backslash E then it'll pop you into your favorite editor and you can just fix the mistake. That's useful if you have a longer query. So speaking of longer queries, let's create a new table. So create table and we'll just open uh, we'll do foo and then we'll open parentheses, do this on multiple lines. Now check out the prompt. The prompt changed. So now we have an open paren in it to remind us that we still have an open parenthesis we need to close at some point. So ID uh, is going to be a big int, and then we'll do uh, so bar will just be uh, var char 255, and then we'll have baz be a timestamp, uh, time stamp uh, with time zone. Now, Postgres has a shortcut for this. You can just do timestamp TZ and you'll get the, the exact same thing. And then let's close that off and create it. Now we'll look at the table, get, get uh, a view of the stuff we just created. So that'll be foo. And then we've got all the stuff we expected. Drop table. Uh, no, don't drop a real table. Let's drop foo. All right. Now let's look at some formatting. So we just tried pulling everything from streaks a few times. 
what if we wanted to format this more like a CSV? So maybe you're connected remotely. Oh, by the way, you can connect remotely just by adding a dash H and then the name of a host afterwards. Um, so say we are connected remotely and we wanted to you know, pull out some data. Maybe you've got a one-time marketing task. Well, that's not too hard to do. You can just save anything with a, a backslash O, but we're gonna format this more like a CSV for convenience. All the formatting options are in PSET, and you can see them all listed here. The ones we care about are the border. So let's set the border to two, first of all, just so you can see how that looks. So now we have uh, the enclosing hashes around it. Now let's set it to zero. Okay. And now we want to unalign it. So we'll do backslash pset format unalign, unaligned, I think. There we go. And now everything is scrunched over to the left. And the last thing is this field separator. And there's a setting for that as well. Pset field sep comma. And now that's looking pretty much like a CSV. Let's just do this where uh, length is greater than two. Or maybe that, maybe that's too big. We'll just get the ones with length greater than one. All right, I want that CSV. So we'll do backslash O, then the name of the file. So we'll just call this streaks.csv and no semicolon. And then we put in our query that we just had. And if we look in another tab, we now have a streaks.csv. And there we go.